We have a female Caucasian who looks to be 18 to 19 years old. Two visible injury wounds to the back of the skull. Powder marks a very close range. Put this light here. Give me a glove. It's a small caliber. This is an execution. You can't find any clothes anywhere. You ready? Rolling her! She's a kid. Who the hell would execute a kid? Genital bruising. You let her pray, Hugo. You let her pray while he raped her. We find this guy. We find him. One sticks with you and others don't, huh? Who knows? Ready? story on News 2, where you get more news in less time every time. Reputed godfather Richard Cortiel sat expressionless as he listened to the first day of testimony of his former underboss, Tony Pasco. To secure his testimony, the United States attorney granted Pasco immunity on 12 mob-related killings, killings he personally carried out, he says, at the request of Cortiel. I asked federal prosecutor John Manning what kind of message this was sending to other mobsters. I think the message to organized crime is loud and clear. You want to do business in this city? You can expect to go to jail for the rest of your life. Thank you. Yes! 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 Yes!
papers to sign for Judge Engel. Far too many. <sighs> You're his favorite prosecutor. And there is a Mrs. Farrell in your office with her lawyer and a half dozen pile boxes. Mrs. Farrell of Farrell Paving. Don't gloat. It gives you lines. Get me Nevins mm -hmm. and get me somebody in here who can add eight-digit figures mm -hmm. without moving their lips. <clears throat> Michael Hayes, assistant United States Attorney's Office. Mrs. Farrell, even if your husband's financial records do prove he what you say... He steals from me, he steals from the government, and she gets the beach house in Montauk. And she would be? She's 21, he's 51. You tell me what else she sees in him. See, Mrs. Farrell, even if what you're saying is true, I see this as a matter for the IRS and not public corruption. He's not afraid of the IRS. He is afraid of you. All I hear is that son of a bitch Michael Hayes. Anytime he even heard your name, he couldn't perform for two weeks. You can see why I'm interested. Well, I'm afraid I'm still not. What do I have to do? There's a rumor, Mrs. Farrell, that some asphalt companies are bribing city officials to reveal their sealed bids after bidding closes. For instance, your husband's company. Now, it's just a rumor. But if anyone had proof of bid fixing, I would do everything in my power to proceed against them. My husband has an office in our basement. All the best people do. Anything you bring me, I'll be happy to take a look at. Hmm. Mrs. Farrell? Sorry. The elevator is that way. Take care. They shoot the fat man nine times, I leave on a sidewalk to die. Six years later, I find out he got up, took a bus to Florida, leaves all the way. So somebody bumps into him back there. They hardly recognize him. He had to cut out his stomach till it's the size of a golf ball. He couldn't eat anything. The guy's now 160 pounds. He looks great. Says he owes it all to me. So I'm thinking, maybe if all this is over, I should go in the diet business. Bing, bing, bing. That'll be $100. We find this guy. We find him. Second. A great American. I know you got a history. Are you okay with this? How big of a dirt bag does a guy have to be before we don't roll out the red carpet for him? Depends on what he's off. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Pasco did your victim, the girl in the field. Yeah. He confessed to it as part of his immunity deal. Now he walks. She was the hooker. The witness that was there when he, when he killed Joe Buck. So he said. Hey, Dave. Michael! I haven't forgotten your way back, huh? That's why. That's good. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Here you go. Counselor. Here you go. I am buying you one, no ifs or buts. Not here. Dave. You do not hear me complaining. I haven't been in here in six years. Dave, my man. What brings you back? You have the conscience? Simpler times. Yes. So. Oh, comes around, huh? Pasco confesses, cleans up our case. This is just you and me celebrating, right? What was her name? Alice Yeager. At least we found out that much, huh? So what do you want to know, Mike? You still the same guy? Yeah, I mean, that psychology crap on indict you. Yeah, if it just called, I would have told you you're not. There's a reason you've been married five times. Yeah. <laughs> I could deal with a piece of dirt like Pasco, man. I could never do your job. Not my case. No, no, no disrespect. I do not envy you. I could never in a million years, but not my case. Besides, we got court heel out of it, so if it was my case, I probably would have done the same thing. You know what bothers me? What gets me nuts? Stupid things. He called her a hooker. She was no hooker, Michael. She was a waitress in a diner. People can't do both. She worked a 12-hour shift until the day she died. You looked at her face, Michael. She was no hooker, and you know that.
can't believe Manning let anybody tape this confession. I don't think he knew. The FBI knows how to cover their ass. Would you use a crowbar? I'll do what it takes. Can I just ask you one question? Mm hmm. What the hell are you doing, man? This guy confessed to this crime. What are you going to do? Prove he didn't do it? He was given immunity on all 12 murders based on the fact that they were mob related. Right? She was a witness to a mob hit. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Immunity is immunity. He's got it. We gave it to him. Listen to this. We shot Joe. We dumped his body under the boardwalk of Cody Island. Then we hopped on the Bell Parkway. We did her in a field near the docks on the other side of town. So if the bodies are found, they're going to tell no story. Why the girl? Joe was supposed to be alone. He's almost 70 years old. He's got asthma and whatnot. It was 9 o'clock on a weeknight. We get to his place. We start to go toward the window. It's those uh, windows that have the curtains that cover the bottom, not the top you see in restaurants. Cafe curtains. Cafe curtains. So we're sneaking up toward the window to look in. And a blonde head pops up. And it goes down right away. And it pops up again. Just the top of the head is all you see popping up and down, up and down. So we look in, and Joe was banging this hooker. I mean, she's going up and down his lap like a rubber ball. So we step back. We figure it'll be over in a couple minutes. She'll be gone. No, 45 minutes later, they're still going at it. She hasn't stopped bouncing for a second. I mean, a stamina of youth, I could understand. But Joe, I mean, he's old, like a grandfather. <laughs> she's standing around. We got to do what we got to do. So Jimmy Sox, rest his soul, goes in with me. I pulls the hooker up by the bony tail. I take Joe, we toss them both in the trunk. And when we get to Coney Island... <laughs> I'm sorry. Picture my face. We open the trunk, and she's on top of him again. <laughs> so, I felt bad just pulling him apart. I mean, I'm sorry. It's a pretty funny story, huh? Quite a laugh. This personal. Don't make this personal, Michael. I looked in her face, Eddie. She was no prostitute. She was a kid. He's confessing to murder. Why would he lie about the details? I don't know. I don't know, but she was no prostitute. And if he's lying about that, he may be lying about why he killed her. I'm gonna change my shirt before the sun comes up. Stuck in a laundry room ever since I've been here, trying to get shop duty for three years. I remember. It's clean work, got a view of the river from the workbench. So finally it comes through, last week, two weeks before I get out. The funny thing is, you could have picked up the phone any time and made it happen, but uh, then everybody would have known I was your kid brother, so. Danny, everybody does know. How come you didn't make the call, Mike? Well, I got you in here. Could have been Rawway State Pen, right? What'd I do if I could say thanks? You called Danny Jr. lately? Does he know I'm getting out? Mm hmm. Walked in on him making a welcome home poster. I think he's hoping to get a chance to put it up. Sounds like you're over there a lot, huh? I'm over there time to time. Yeah. How's my wife? She used to hate me. What she may be saying and how she may be feeling could be two different things, but I do think you should call her. When I get out, I can't go back there. Okay. Come and stay with me. <laughs> Clear out some stuff. Leave it, I'll hawk it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Pasco says they were at the house at 9 o'clock. They waited outside 45 minutes, then they dragged Joe and Alice outside and make it 9.45. Puts the two of them still alive into the trunk of his car, drives to Coney Island, drags Joe out and pops him. How far from Joe's to Coney Island? About five miles through Brooklyn. Okay, weeknight, make it 10.15. Hops on the Belt Parkway, drives to the docks in Red Hook. Okay, 10.45, 11. Kills Alice, so either rapes her and then kills her. Mm. Fluids decompose, we could not prove it. By then it's 11.30, 11.40, drives from there to his club in Williamsburg. Surveillance photo picks him up and then right after midnight. Cortil's defense team went over every syllable. Found nothing to contradict his statement. Hopped on the belt parkway. What? What you got? Okay, I used to go to law school, St. John's, okay? And I would go to school from the precinct after the dog shift, and I never took the Belt Parkway. Why not? Well, is there an entrance there? There's an entrance two blocks from the boardwalk. I never took it. Brooklyn? Who the hell knows Brooklyn anyway? I do. Check when it was open, because my bet is that the ramp was not open until after I graduated, which would be two and a half years later, which means the funny man is a liar. Give me highway department. Well, thank you, Madam Attorney General. I'll pass it on. Goodbye, ma'am. And I hate that they can reach you everywhere. Sounded like a nice call, though. And from Washington, you don't get those often. In fact, you get them about, um, well, never. <laughs> I've already ordered my steak. What are you having? I won't eat. Well, they're reading our reports. They're watching CNN. And they are very happy with how the Cortile case is going. As they should be. Manning tells me you stole his files. Sir, I'd like to think we're all on the same team. I'd like to think there's going to be peace on Earth. What are you doing, everybody's job now, Michael? There are inconsistencies in the Pasco testimony that I find troubling. The deal is based on the fact that Cortile ordered all 12 murders. I believe Pasco is lying about one of them. So, nine years ago, you were a homicide cop investigating a murder. Now that murder just happens to develop troubling inconsistencies. What are you saying, Michael? He didn't kill this girl? No, sir. He killed the girl. I just don't think it was mob-related. I think he knew it would surface, so he put it into the pot. He also claimed that she was a prostitute. She was a 19-year-old girl bouncing up and down on the lap of a 65-year-old guy. He further claimed to have taken an exit ramp on the Bell Parkway that did not exist at the time. Well, you want to take away his immunity deal because he took the wrong ramp? This is what's troubling you? I ask you here to say two words to you. Richard Cortile. If you want to volunteer for his defense team, do it on weekends. You better get back. Michael, don't be a pain in the ass. Hey, I hear Vaughn pin your ears back. You got too many spies, my friend. Lindsay Strauss? Two floors up. Thanks. Ah. So where do we go? I want to re-interview everybody connected to the Alice Yeager You want me case. to talk to everybody you talked to That's nine right. years Dig ago? Dig them up, see what we missed. What do you mean? You never missed anything. Obviously, I did. You spent how many years on this? Many, many, and I should never have stopped. And what makes you think I have better luck than you? Because you're a better investigator than I am. Are you saying that I'm better than you? That's what I'm saying. Call Hugo. He'll help you. Huh. I'm sorry, I'm looking for Lindsay Strauss. Sorry. I'm Lindsay Strauss. Oh. Sorry. Uh, I'm uh, Michael Hayes. You're chief of public corruption. You don't need to introduce yourself. You must have really pissed somebody off. Okay. <laughs> meaning what? No, just meaning that they stick you up in the shoebox. I don't. Anyway, considering your reputation is what I mean. <sighs> And, and by reputation, you mean? By your reputation, I mean that if there's a legal Gordian knot to untie and you can't find the ends of the rope, you seek out Lindsay Strauss. Oh. Okay, so... How, how can I help you? You're familiar with the Pasco case? Yes. 
I want to pop out one of the murders from his immunity agreement. The agreement our boss, U.S. attorney, gave him? Yeah, he's scheduled to do four years in Allenwood. I want him to do life in a place where they're not going to put a mint on his pillow. And this would be after Pasco has kept his end of the bargain? That's correct. Are you looking for space on my floor? Because, you know, what there is, I guard jealously. Let's say that he's lying about the details of one of the murders. Then, in theory, the deal is invalid. He can be prosecuted on all counts for 12 murders. Everything he said, his entire testimony can be used against him. Can you prove he lied? Not yet. Here's why you're risking. The jury hears he lied about this, or not going to believe a word is said about anything else. What if I want both? What if I want Pasco and a conviction on Cortile? Well, with the information coming out this late, I'd say that the odds on that happening are nil. Which is why I brought it to you. Think about it. Uncle Mike, why is it in Sal's basement? It's in Sal's basement because Sal taught me how to fish in the same way I'm going to teach you. What if we don't get it? Danny. Here's the deal. You don't have to go to sleep until you have in your possession one genuine Spin Master Titan Boys fishing rod. So if you don't get it, I could stay up for weeks. Months. Cool. <laughs> Danny, go do your math. Yes, ma'am. Do a good job. Okay. See you later. Yes, ma'am? He'll have good manners even if I can't give him anything else. Sal is checking out a job for Danny. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm picturing Danny with a lunchbox. Danny punching a time clock. Ooh. He deserves a chance. No, but I want him to have every chance. I do. I guess I don't hear you mentioning you and Danny. You know, um... He never opened his mouth without lying, and he stole from me, and he stole from his son. How do I take him back, huh? You give him time. <sighs> Caitlin, people change. Danny can change. Michael, you know, even you have a hard time believing that. You're beeping. Remember the Chinese guy on the store, Mr. Chan? Mr. Chan, he was real helpful. Excuse me, Mr. Chan. Mr. Hayes here is a very busy man now. He's an assistant United States attorney. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan, you said you saw the girl the night of the murder. Yeah, Alice, yes, uh, sometime after dark. I don't remember when. Mm -hmm. But you told us nine years ago you never talked to her. That's right. So you have nothing new to tell us? No, nothing new. What am I doing here? Mm -mm. Mr. Chan, listen. Now, you said that was the first time she was here, right? Yes. Now, how'd you know her name was Alice? Like I told you five minutes ago, it was written here. Like a name tag? Yeah, a name tag. Mr. Wait, Mr. Chan? Nine years ago, you told me she was wearing a yellow dress. A yellow dress with the name here. A uniform. She was wearing a uniform. a uniform. Thank you. Hugo, how long did she work at the diner? Six weeks. She's been in town for two months. Diners open 24 hours. What shift do they give to the new girls? Nights. Nights. She was on her way to work, not on a date with Joe the Cook. And she was wearing a uniform. Corner store is located halfway between her apartment and the diner she worked at. Now, my witness claims she was in her uniform, which suggests to me... Maybe she changed her mind. Maybe she got halfway to work, changed her mind, went for a drink, ended up in bed with Joe. In her uniform, really. So maybe Joe has got a kinky thing for uniforms. Maybe she had nothing else to wear. 
I can give you a hundred scenarios here, Michael. You can't even put a time to this. Her shift began at 11 o'clock, which puts her on the way to work between 10 and 11, which is the time Pasco claims he had her in the trunk of his car. No, your witness said after dark. It gets dark at 5 o'clock that time of year. Now, maybe she wanted to go straight to work from Joe's. You ever think of that? No, you've got nothing that contradicts Pasco's statement. There are enough inconsistencies in this that suggest that it did not happen the way your witness testified. I have got two people dead. I have got a man who has confessed to those two killings, and he has a very credible and detailed account of how that occurred. I have a very expensive, very skilled opposing counsel that hasn't been able to make a dent in it. And with all that testimony, I have built a case against the biggest mob boss left in this city. Built on a lie. What have you got, Hayes? Hmm? No, Pasco's line, you tell me how it happened. I don't know. You don't know. What do you have against me, Hayes? Michael, John's right. You don't have anything to contradict Pasco's testimony. None of it is Brady. There is nothing for us to turn over to the defense. Pasco's deal stands. Goes to the jury by the weekend, sir. Then he walks. You're not a cop anymore, Michael. You're a U.S. attorney. Gentlemen, I think we're being lazy. I think we can get them both. Well, I'm not willing to risk it. Yes, sir. I don't mean to bother you. Come on in, sit down. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I tried to talk to you yesterday about the asphalt kickbacks, but I know how busy you've been, and so I thought I would take some initiative, but uh, I'm afraid that I may have overstepped, and I don't want you to get the impression that I'm some sort of a loose cannon that just sort of goes off whenever... It's... Jenny, just tell me what you did. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Mrs. Farrell came back with some stubs from one of her husband's checkbooks. It turns out that they have been paying almost... $10,000 a year on pool maintenance. Sounds like they were getting ripped off. Well, yeah, especially when uh, you consider they, they don't even have a pool. <laughs> you trace the company? Yes, um, owned by a B. Trent, who turns out to be the wife of a Vince Bitterman. The commissioner of purchase? Responsible for awarding the city's asphalt contracts. Hmm. Good work. Thanks. Um, see, I, I haven't gotten to the overstepping part yet. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> I called Mr. Farrell into my office and I confronted him with the stubs and informed him that uh, we have him on three felony counts of bribery. He's agreed to wear a wire. You flipped him? Mm-hmm. You flipped Mr. Farrell? Yes. What did you offer him? Uh, nothing, really. Look, I know, I know that I have overstepped my bounds here in a big way, and then the fact that I wanted to keep it off your plate while you were busy was, it was Jenny. absolutely no excuse for not seeking your Shh, approval Jenny. first for... Yes, sir. Where is he? Well, he's, he's, he's in my office, actually. Um, okay. He's, he's absolutely aware that you have to approve everything. Um, this is my supervisor, Michael Hayes, chief of the public corruption unit. Give us a minute, will you, Jenny? Yes. Mr. Farrell, it's my understanding that you've agreed to cooperate. You need to understand that in no way does this limit any criminal charges that we may bring against you, and there is no deal on the table. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. You'll put in a good word for mm -hmm. me. That depends on what you bring us, but you will do time. Fine, fine. Just, just keep that blonde bitch away from me. Can you do that? We will take care of your wife. No, not my wife. That bitch out there! I'll do my best. Okay. Good work, man. Thank you, sir. Hey! Got a second? Sure. 
I need a pair of fresh eyes on this. I'm spinning here, man. Spinning. Now, we know she was seen at the corner store on her way to work. 10.30ish, but she never made it to work at 11 o'clock. So if we're right, Pasco had to snatch her off the street somewhere between 10.30 and 11. Mm -hmm. After he killed Joe, the book, and dumped him. So he just riding along and just grabbed some girl off the street? Why would he have to do that? You've seen the surveillance photos. Women are all over this guy. It doesn't make any sense, Michael. What else do we know? Let's rework the route. OK. Figure he grabs Joe the book when he says he does. He kills him, dumps the body here in Coney Island. Then he says he jumps on the Belt Parkway and drives the girl, takes her right up here to where you found the body. Which we don't buy. So he kills Joe the book and he dumps him in Coney. Where does he go next? To his club, to his paisans to show off. Club is up here. Nowhere near Chan's or the diner. OK, how about home? Again, nothing. Show me the club. Where's his home? Every day, you would take the same route. There in the morning, back at night. Same room, same room, right there. Every day, and he would pass the diner. He knew her. So, Mrs. Silver, your husband doesn't work anymore. Well, my husband says don't make too much sense no more. Don't get old. Mm, nine years ago, I asked him if Alice was having any trouble. If anybody was bothering her, he said no. Then it must be no. Nine years ago, his mind was clear as a bell. She was supposed to show up to work that night. She never did. Look, she was a beautiful girl. You know it's a shame. A man confessed to the crime. This is him. So you caught the bastard. What do you need from me? I need you to take a look at this you picture and tell me if this guy has ever been in here, ago. Mrs. Silver. Mrs. Silver, take a look at this picture. Take a look. Your husband was frightened of this guy. That's why he lied to me. You know this guy. You know him. He was in here that night. So was Alice. Miss Silver, take a look at it. We were robbed so many times. I got shot. Cut twice. Fifteen years ago, he goes to Tony Pasco and and tells him about it. And, and we don't get robbed no more. <laughs> Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. <laughs> There's no way. No way to untie your Gordian knot. You're not going to put Pasco away without seriously jeopardizing the Cortil case. I'm sorry. <laughs> what you're really telling me is you're not as good as everybody said you were. And the real reason I'm in this office. <laughs> Alexander the Great used a sword. Did he? Gordius of Phrygia tied a knot that was impossibly intricate. An oracle said that whoever could untie it would rule Asia. Alexander pulls out a sword and he cuts it in two. Well, you got a last name like great. You got to live up to it, right? If you can't untie the knot, you got to have the guts to cut it. I'm listening. Okay. 10 o'clock, as soon as the judge walks in, Manning's got to go in screaming that Pasco lied. He's got to get him back on the stand. He's got to tear his skin off and get him to admit to it. Use a sword before they do. And then trust the jury can tell one lie from another. And pray. Mm. You know, because if this goes the wrong way, 
No one's gonna remember that you got Pasco, but you're always gonna be the guy that gave away Cortillo. Not lost on me. Okay. All right. Thank you. Michael. Yeah. You looked in the mirror. Uh, no. Don't. Here. I got it. Yeah. Yeah, right. There you go. Whew. Nobody can find anything down here but me. Thanks. You want to thank me? Get something I can eat. In the East River South. New York water, best water in the world. You can tell who you work for. Why does the kid yawn so much? He works nights. <laughs> you should get some sleep. Can I try it outside? Sure. Be careful with the hook, though, right? OK. There you go. Careful with the hook. <laughs> you OK? Yeah. You talk to your friend? The plating company? It's a done deal. Your brother starts the work first day after he gets out. Appreciate it. Then answer my question. Are you OK? I'm fine. I'm just tired. Uncle Mike! Uh-oh. Uh-oh, emergency, Sal. Here, 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 here. Come here, come here, come here. let me help. Come here. Come on, okay. Oh, God, this used to happen to your uncle every day. Right up until he was... 21. 21? <laughs> oh, still. There we go, wait a minute. I got it, I got it. Just one second, just let me wrap it. All right, wait a minute, very easy. I got it, got it. There you go. We have no choice. Let's bring him in. This is nonsense. My client cooperated, he confessed to the crime, and you, you gave him immunity. If we can prove your client lied, his deal is out the window. Now, he has two choices. Come clean on the Alice Yeager murder and do 25 to life, or fight it, face all counts, and end up facing the needle. Why don't you go to hell? I got immunity. And we got a two-way mirror. That's him sitting on the table. That's a positive. Want to go for a lineup? I got the husband downstairs drinking coffee right now. You know him, right, Mr. Pasco? He used to go to his diner all the time. Mr. Pasco used to go to the diner, and he liked to tease the waitresses, didn't you? He used to give him a ride in the car every once in a while, but not Alice Yeager. Alice Yeager wouldn't go for a ride with you, would she? You know, I don't know what this guy is talking about. You didn't like being turned down by a waitress, did you? So the night that you killed Joe the Book, you were feeling pretty good about yourself. So you went to the diner, and she was there. And you said to yourself, tonight is the night that I get a piece of this. Nothing to do with my business. This was all you. All you. You got to be in court, John. This deal is good until I stand up. Now, there's a legal principle that's known as falsus in omnibus, and that says if a person has lied to you once, you may disbelieve him in all things. Now, the decision and the responsibility are yours. Will the defendant please rise?
Will the poor person please read the verdict? We, the jury, in the case of U.S. versus Richard Cortiel, find the defendant guilty on count one, guilty on count two, guilty on count three, and guilty on count four. Michael. Yes, sir. Keep it up. Policeman, aren't you? I'm Mrs. Shaker, Alice's mother. I know who you are, ma'am. I don't. I wish that. Uh... It's okay. I just wanted to thank you. You told me that you wouldn't give up, and you didn't. I don't know if I'll sleep any easier. I hope so. But I know Alice will. Thank you. Standing out here for me. I'll be in the car. Man. 